Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another weekly meal prep. So this week I'm going to be showing you my menu as usual and each thing I'm prepping for each day. So we start out with Monday, we're going to be doing chili dogs, which is a freezer meal. All of the links for these meals and recipes will be below. With some gluten-free buns, we are going to be doing a great cucumber salad, which is perfect for these warmer days that we have going on. And we're also going to be doing an artificial choke dip. I don't know about you all, but I think that warm weather just means dip weather. I love making dips that go great with chips or crackers or even some fresh bell preppers or some celery. They just seem like a great thing, especially if you want to take it along to a picnic or some sort of gathering. So this recipe for this cucumber salad is very, very simple. All you need is a little bit of vinegar and you're going to slice your cucumbers really thin. I like to use my mandolin. I've been using this monk fruit and allulose sweetener, but but this is cup for cup, so you would use the same amount of sugar if you're gonna use a regular sugar, and I used a little less than two tablespoons in this. I also sliced up some purple onion as thin as I did the cucumbers just to kind of keep it all around the same consistency. I used some avocado oil and then some oregano and you just want to stir all of this together. You want to add a pinch of salt as well and this salad to be honest I feel like is better once it has sat in the refrigerator for a while and really let those flavors combine. This is a great side dish to take along if you're going to to a potluck or you're getting together with friends and family. Next, we're going to be using a good amount of mozzarella cheese in the recipes today, and I've been buying my cheeses like this in very large blocks. If I get them from my local grocery stores, I can get a very good discount on the cheese per pound if I buy it in large quantities like this, and I personally feel like the cheese actually lasts a lot longer in my refrigerator if it's not sliced. If you just keep it in a large block like this, it can actually keep for several months this way. And then at the end, you're gonna see me wrapping the end of it with some of my beeswax wrap that I have been loving. I really actually like this better than saran wrap for certain things. I feel like it blocks out air and it just keeps a nice covering over the cheese. All right, so now we're going to whip up the artichoke dip and you may be more familiar with spinach and artichoke dip, but not everybody enjoys spinach. So this is a good way to do a little bit of a simpler dip. Also, if you don't have fresh spinach on hand, but you have a can of artichoke, you may be more likely to have all of the ingredients for this dip. So I'm going to use some of the mozzarella cheese that I already had shredded up. I grabbed my box grater to grate up some Parmesan cheese. I just prefer to grate it a little bit bit finer than what my food processor grades cheese so I went ahead and did that by hand and then I pressed a clove of garlic into this as well Next, I chopped up some green onion and I did chop it lengthways first before I chopped all of the small pieces just because I wanted it to be very finely chopped to be mixed into the dip. I just use this hand mixer that I've had forever to mix it all together, but you could probably put it into a stand mixer as well. Then I use my little oil dispenser and I decided to dump this into a pie plate. I just thought it was a nice way to serve this dip. And again, I just got a piece of my beeswax wrap. This is a different print, but I've been really liking these. I think I'm going to order another pack from Amazon. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. I have personally been using Skillshare for years and I love the layout of their platform. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. 
Also, as a busy mom, another feature I love is every single class is broken into sections so I can watch small sections at a time and come back to it, making it possible for me to complete full classes. Skillshare's entire catalog of classes now offers subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch. They have a huge variety of class topics, anything from creative writing to culinary skills, which of course may interest you since you are watching a cooking video. I know that you all will love Skillshare as much as I do. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare to try out. All right, so we are back to our meal prep. So Tuesday, we're gonna do chicken fajitas, fathead tortillas, and home canned veggies. So the chicken fajitas, I have already prepped in the freezer, but now we're going to make some fathead tortillas. And you might be wondering why they're called fathead tortillas. Well, it's because they are a pretty high fat content food. You're starting out with some of that shredded mozzarella. I just microwaved it until it was nice and melted and stringy. I'm going to whisk up one egg to dump in with it and then I'm also adding in some almond flour. You can also do this with coconut flour as well. If you go online and you google fat head recipes, you can use this dough base for a lot of different recipes. I want to try out making some fat head bagels next but either way i'm very new to using this method of making a gluten-free dough option and i'm looking forward to playing around with it so i put this in the refrigerator to kind of get a little bit more stiff since it was warm from the cheese being melted while it was in the refrigerator i decided to work on a few other things i wanted to prep for the week one of them being some almond milk i have shown you all how to do this before and i think a lot of you were really shocked at how simple this is so you soak your almonds overnight I do about a cup of almonds for every quart of water and I'm actually getting ready to try a new method of this and that is doing blanched almonds so stay tuned if I it is successful I will definitely be sharing that so I just take a piece of cheesecloth you can also take a piece of a cotton t-shirt if you'd rather use something you have on hand or recycle um, a t-shirt you can use that as well you want to make sure it's washed really well and not washed in a heavy detergent maybe just wash it with some white vinegar in your sink before using it but you can also use a cheesecloth they also do make nut milk bags that are made out of cheesecloth that make this job a little bit easier so you just dump it into the cheesecloth in the bowl and then you just wring out the almond milk and as you see here I have this Ziploc bag that I keep in my freezer and I'm collecting the almond pulp that I will be turning into almond flour and I'm probably going to show that in a video sometime soon using my dehydrator to make a almond flour. So I just repeated the process so that I got a half gallon of almond milk. At this point I had checked my fat head dough and it still wasn't quite as stiff as I wanted it to be so I decided to go ahead and prep my fruits and veggies for fresh eating for the week. So I just got the salad spinner not that long ago. I think you all saw it in my last video but I've been loving it for helping to prep my fruit and veggies. It's just convenient for certain things. One of them being grapes. So I just went ahead and put some cold water in there. I dumped a little bit of white vinegar in in there and just let it soak while I cut up these melons. This watermelon was so delicious. Let me know in the comments how you like to cut up your watermelon. I feel like cutting it this way by cutting the rind off, I get the most bang for my buck with the watermelon. And I also got a honeydew. I had never cut up a honeydew for the girls and we were talking about it this week and they wanted to taste it and of course, Per usual, when I'm cutting up fruits and veggies, somebody around the house wants some and they just can't wait. So I just went ahead and made them some bowls and gave them each some to snack on. Honeydew do have seeds in them, so I did scoop those out first and then I did the same method of cutting off the rind. After I had cut up my melons, I did pull out my grapes. I dumped out the water and then I spun the grapes in the salad spinner just to kind of dry them off and get the water off. I love that this salad spinner has a little break 
button on the top so you can stop it really easily. After I put the grapes into a container, I also cut up some celery. This is a great vehicle for like the artichoke dip or just simply for having celery and peanut butter as a snack. All right, so now we're going to go back to working with our tortillas. I made my pan hot with some avocado oil and I wasn't sure how I was going to work with these because the dough is a little more fragile than a regular flour dough. But I figured out that using a rolling pin with a little bit of parchment paper on top worked out great. Then I used a spatula to just scoop them off of my prep table and I put them right into the frying pan. And these are so delicious. The flavor that comes out of these is so yummy. I'm so excited to make more of these. Also, they were very, very sturdy and will hold together well. Anybody ready for zucchini season? If you have a garden, you know that usually we have so much zucchini, you could feed the entire town, right? <laughs> I love zucchini, and as you can tell, this week and last week, I am definitely working on getting more zucchini in our diet with the garden coming along. I know that we are going to want go-to recipes to use up zucchini this summer, plus it's so good for you. So on Wednesday, we're gonna be having Cajun chicken, zucchini boats, hash brown casserole, and garlic parm biscuits. You wanna start out by just oiling the pan that you're going to be using. And then I like to take a little spoon and kind of carve out the boat part of the zucchini. You don't actually have to do this. You could just cut the zucchini lengthwise and put them right in and pile everything on top of the zucchini that's been cut in half. But I like to core them out a little bit just to hold the filling. And then I got some of my canned chicken. Yes, I have more canning recipes coming, so keep an eye out for that. Got some of that out and I know that about a pound and a half of chicken breast is what fits into a quart jar and I want about a pound of chicken so if you're making this with fresh chicken you just want to cook up about a pound of chicken and have it diced or shredded and then I cut a whole bell pepper I feel like a good orange or red bell pepper goes great with these flavors and I dice that up and put that right in with the chicken I put a little drizzle of avocado oil in there and then I used some avocado oil mayo although I didn't have a full cup's worth and you want about a cup for this recipe then you're gonna be adding in all of the spices and again I will list this recipe below but this is a great summer meal option and I feel like it's one that you can whip together so easily you can prep it ahead and just pop it right into the oven To go along with the zucchini boats, I wanted to make up a hash brown casserole. I have been wanting to create something like this for a long time. If you all ever go to Cracker Barrel, you know that they have an amazing hash brown casserole, and this one is a perfect match for it. You can give it a healthy twist by using riced cauliflower, or you could go ahead and use regular little diced potatoes. Either way, it's really, really yummy. So as you can see, I'm pouring my heavy cream out of the jar and that's because for the most part, I have been using powdered heavy cream. So I just mix it up as the instructions tell you to and I just store it in a jar in my refrigerator, mainly out of convenience and I can have a lot of it stored in my long-term storage and I can just mix up heavy cream whenever I need it and not have to worry about it going bad in the refrigerator. Along with that, I'm mixing some spices up and everything will be linked below as usual for these recipes. But all you need to do is let that kind of cook together after the onions have cooked down. And then I'm adding my frozen cauliflower. Again, if you wanna use frozen hash browns, you definitely can do that um, just using regular potatoes. And then you're gonna need like a cup and a half of shredded cheddar. Now the trick to this is to truly do it low and slow. A spatula is really nice to stir it, um, but you just wanna let it slowly melt so you're not burning the cheese or you're not burning anything else in the mixture. Now to top it, you can definitely use breadcrumbs of your choice or you can do this mixture where I'm doing some 
pork rinds and a little bit of Parmesan cheese, but I had these Parmesan cheese crisps that I decided to throw in instead. This keeps it all gluten-free if you're gluten-free and it still gives it that nice crunch on top if you enjoy that. If you don't, you can definitely still make this hash brown casserole without the crunchy topping. And then to reheat this, I will just pop it in the oven on the day that we're gonna eat this meal and let it warm up while the zucchini boats are cooking as well. To go with this meal, I'm also making some garlic parmesan biscuits and oh my goodness, these things are to die for. They make your kitchen smell incredible. So if you just want to make your kitchen smell like you're making something amazing, you can bake these. Not that they aren't amazing, the smell is just so great. These are such a great texture, I love them. Again, if you are looking for something gluten free, we've had a lot of major health things come up up in our family in the last little while. So leaning more towards gluten-free and healthy options is definitely where we're at. Not to say that I won't be sharing recipes that aren't gluten-free, it's just what I'm prepping a lot more for my family. So for these biscuits, you're gonna want to mix up the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients separately. And um, I just kind of did the wet ingredients in a little pitcher. Again, I'm grabbing from some of my mixed up heavy cream for this recipe. The powdered heavy cream um, mixed it with water, just mixing it up in a jar like that. I have not tried whipping it to see if it would make whipped cream. I kind of doubt that it would just because of how it's all been broken down a little bit. But for recipes like this, it works fantastic. And then because I've been trying to be more sustainable, I've been loving these mats to put in the bottom of my cookie sheets instead of parchment paper. They clean so easily and they work so well to make everything really non-stick. So these biscuits I just scooped out with a nice big cookie scoop. I'll leave that cookie scoop link below. And then I did flatten them out a bit because they don't kind of flatten out on their own. Then I topped them with some more Parmesan cheese and threw them in the oven. And you are going to want to do this next step. You could definitely wait until you're ready to serve these to do this, but I felt like they stored really well um, doing it right away after they came out of the oven. So I mixed up about three tablespoons of melted butter with some garlic powder and parsley. I just shook them in and then I brushed it across the top of these biscuits. And all I can say is I will be making these again and again. I do a cheddar version of these as well as you may have remembered from the past, but these were just so easy and yummy. For Thursday, we are going to do a tuna casserole, which is a freezer meal, deviled eggs, and and bacon green beans. I'll be using my home canned green beans and I didn't really have any prep for this because I was going to make the deviled eggs later in the week and obviously casserole is already made in the freezer and the bacon green beans I would make the day of us eating that meal. Now for Friday we are doing a stuffed pork tenderloin. I'm going to call this a Greek inspired stuffed pork tenderloin. It does have both blue cheese and feta. However, not everybody likes blue cheese. Perfectly understandable. Our family loves blue cheese. Um, and if you don't care for the blue cheese, you can do all feta for this recipe. Along with this stuffed pork tenderloin, I'm also going to be making a creamy coleslaw and mashed potatoes. But again, since this is going to be later in the week, I'm going to wait to make that coleslaw and the mashed potatoes until the day of or maybe even the day before we eat this meal. Because I constantly get questions on reheating, what I'll be doing with this is making it in the pressure cooker as you're going to see here in a moment. You could also make this in the oven. I'm going to slice it up and then when we go to eat this meal, I'm going to actually lay the sliced pork tenderloin on a cookie sheet, throw it in the oven and bake it up a little bit until it's completely heated through for us to be able to eat it on the day that we are supposed to eat this. This turned out so, so delicious. I do think that it got a little bit overcooked as you're going to see in the end result. So the next time I think I will not allow it to cook quite as long, but I love this idea of stuffing pork tenderloin just because sometimes it can be a little on the dry side and I really felt like this gave a lot more moisture to this cut of meat. 
with my big pressure cooker that I've been loving. I have this nice little rack that I can sit in the bottom for recipes like this. I put about a cup of water down there in the bottom and then I just sat both of the tenderloins inside. You are supposed to use, ideally I would have used toothpicks with this, but I was out of toothpicks. So I went ahead and just cut some skewers in half just to help hold everything together. I hope this video was inspiring to you all. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment that always helps me out. And don't forget to check out the description box for all of the recipes and links to anything you might be interested in this video. Keep an eye out because I have a lot of really exciting videos coming up and I'll see you all in my next video.